Welcome back to um, uh, Kicking It. What's my show called? Kicking It with KG. We are here today with Tanner and Trey Guzzi. Why don't you tell them who they are first? Also, if you think you these are familiar faces, it's probably because they are. Go ahead and tell them how or like how would they know you? What videos have you been in? Um, I've been in the uh, like the double we got the double does. Yeah. And then we also been in the squirrel hunting video. Yeah, we uh we went down. I went down there last year in the fall, and we done a couple. We did one squirrel hunting video. Mm-hmm. It was actually on the second channel, and then it was the same videos where we doubled up on does with muzzle loaders. We killed two does in what? It was like a minute. Yeah, it was less than a long. minute. Yeah. And then also shot a spike in the throat and uh, <laughs> killed it. It was a good one, and I thought it was a doe. Mm-hmm. That was a really good video. And then we also went bear hunting. That was in one of the videos, but we unfortunately didn't kill a bear. We saw one yeah. though. It was like sixty yards, and it, we. It was a good thing I didn't take the shot, because if we, if I would have, I'd just been hoping at that point. It was kind of a. It was turned around and walking away, and uh, I was about to shoot it. But then Were you I was, nervous? I didn't. I. Mm, I was like, I was thinking, you know, I was like, you know what? If I can get lucky enough to hit a deer in the throat. I get lucky enough to kill this, but then I was like, you know what? It don't work like that. I'm not gonna shoot this bear. That could have been bad. Yeah. If I'd like shot it and if I'd missed it, that'd been okay. But if I'd hit it in the back of the leg, right. then we'd have a wounded bear. And it's like you'd never really know whether you killed it or not. And that's probably the worst thing ever. Mm-hmm. Anyways, he is an up and coming YouTuber, like you guys may have seen. He's uh, tell us about your channel so far. What's the name of it? How many how many videos you made and all that good Chasing stuff? Chasing Outdoors with Tanner Guzzi. Mm-hmm. And I made probably about. I mean, so I've been starting to make some videos lately mm-hmm. more, but I haven't been posting yeah. in a while, so I'm starting to post more now. Where all do you uh, like have your social media stuff? On Instagram, Facebook, and of course YouTube. And what do you do? Just outdoor stuff? Yeah, just about fish hunt trap. Pretty much the same as you just about, but not as big. Not and as in big. Virginia, what a state! It we it's not as much mountains as Kentucky, that's for sure. I know they live in a valley, and I live in the mountains. Anyways, they do have some questions about me for me. We have Tanner who has more YouTube-based questions, and then Trey actually has some like fan questions in a way about the channel as a whole. So we can just uh, this is going to be a really good video really good podcast if you guys have any questions about kind of behind the scenes of youtube or if you guys are kind of wanting to start your own youtube channel at all this will be a really good one because we've got some really good things we're going to talk about it's almost going to be like a reverse podcast but obviously i'm going to be asking him stuff too so go ahead okay. what you got the first question is how do you edit your videos all right i edit them i edit my all right that's actually a really good question First off, I should say that I don't necessarily edit all my videos anymore. Obviously, whenever I started, I did edit my own videos, but I have like a bunch of channels now. And if I tried to edit every video for every channel, that'd be nearly impossible. So I actually have an editor for the main channel, and he's very young. He's from Canada. His name's Gabe. He's going to be in a podcast pretty soon, so just uh, subscribe if not already if you want to see that, because that's going to be a really fun podcast. Then for actually editing the podcast, we have Ethan. He's not here with us today, but he edits those like a champ. Then for the gaming channel, we have a guy named Ryan editing those. And then for the second channel, pretty much just whoever edits those. And then for the other channels, just I forgot. I forgot my other channels. I got like seven. We'll talk about those later, (laughs) I guess. A lot of them people don't know about. Okay. Also, that, that's going to be a question too. How much, like, yeah. what's all your YouTube channels? But another thing about editing, when I did edit, and I know that Gabe, which is the editor, I know what he edits on. We both edit on Final Cut Pro, which is basically Premiere Pro, which, but for Mac. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Premiere, I mean, Final Cut Pro is not available on Microsoft, or I mean, Windows. That's what it's called. It's only on Mac. What do you, what do you edit with? iMovie for now. I'm on movie. Mac. On Mac, yeah. I'll, I've never actually done much with iMovie. It's easy. Is it? Is it pretty simple? Yeah, it's not hard at all. Is it easy to get it's, done? It's, 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 it's pretty much the same as yours, just maybe a little easier. You know something about Ethan? What? He can edit on Final Cut, but then he says he cannot figure out how to do iMovie. That, that should be reversed, but I don't know what his deal is. <laughs> he said he can't figure out iMovie. That's supposed to be the simplest thing in the entire world. 
Supposed to be. I ain't never tried it. I might actually get on and try it. Okay, here's the next question. Why did you start YouTube? Man. Why? Why did I start YouTube? That's a good question. I'm going to I'm gonna lean on in a little bit for this one. But anyways, I started YouTube probably, I think it was five or six years ago. I'm going to say six years ago. And so I was just, I was just like a freshman in high school, right? In middle school, I played basketball. For the team, I was up. Uh, I was battling for eleventh man, and it's so most people would think, oh, he's he's wanting to be eleventh man, you know, get up on the roster. No, I was wanting to be twelfth man, and we kept fighting for twelfth man because whenever someone got tired on the second string, eleventh man would had to go in, and I didn't. No, neither one of us wanted to be that guy that had to go in, so we was always trying to be twelfth or eleventh man or twelfth man. But anyways, I played that. I was trapping. That's whenever I started trapping. And I was always like, well, I don't have time to trap. I was going, I was coming in every evening, like, um, what? Like, it was after basketball practice, so I'd come in, go check the trap line, then have to skin a coyote at 8 o'clock at night in the dark. So that wasn't too, I don't know, it was all right. But, like, then I realized I should probably quit basketball because I don't really like basketball that much. It was all right, but definitely wasn't my thing. And uh, so then I started trapping more. And while I was out there, there was guys on YouTube. And I liked fishing a lot at the time, so I started watching them on YouTube. There was one guy, he just, like, done tackle reviews. He would, like, go fishing in his backyard. Or not in his backyard, but lakes around him. And he would just, like, open up baits. And people would watch him. And I'd be the one watching him, too. So I really liked him. He was sponsored by some bait companies, and I thought that was awesome. And um, his name is Andrew Flair. And it's, it was a while back. I subscribed to him way back, just saying. Like, it was below 19,000. It it's, might have been 19,000 yeah. whenever I subscribed to him. So I'm one of his OGs, back whenever it's called <laughs> Fishing with Flair. Now it's Flair. But I watched him a lot, and I was like, dang, that looks fun, dude. So then I picked up a camera and started doing it myself. And uh, it was kind of fun. It gave me something to do. I wasn't doing basketball anymore, and it was the summer, so I had plenty of time to just do whatever was happening. It was kind of fun, though. That's why I started, because I got bored in the summer. And then uh, it just uh, started doing doing all right. Like, I didn't really... I didn't. It didn't really take off immediately. I remember I started it in, like, June. Actually, let me say this. I started YouTube. I posted my first video once, and then it was, like, a four, couple month gap before I posted my second one. And then there's another couple months of gap before I posted my next one. Then after that, I really started posting regularly. But I had tried to start a YouTube channel months before I posted the first one. But I could never figure out how to edit. But I eventually did because I kept trying two months later. And then eventually I figured it out. And that's when I started posting pretty consistently. After you started YouTube, how long did it take before you got monetized? Uh, Probably about two years. I don't think I don't know I don't even remember what monetization was like back then. It was a while ago. But I I was just making videos and then randomly they were like you've had ads on your videos it's time to claim your check and I was like <laughs> what? And so then I claimed what little there was. Mm -hmm. But it took it took um before it actually took off at all. It was like um before it took off at all. It was like, um, let's see, if I started it in June, it took off about November. So it's probably, what, what is that, four, five months, something like that, six months maybe, roughly around that area. And so then it kind of done okay. It took a little bump. And then I remember in January, it actually took a pretty good bump because I that fox got away from me, Trapper's Worst, worst Nightmare. And it was actually shared a lot on Facebook, r randomly, <laughs> and it got like, I don't know, maybe I'm not sure, but maybe like a million, millions or hundreds of thousands of views, which was a ton, mm -hmm. and still is, and I just started gaining from there. But now it wasn't like a rocket ship from there, right? Or maybe it was. I don't know. I can't remember. I started growing pretty pretty fast, compared to everybody else, I guess. Right there, one video took off. It was a good video. And people started liking them. People started watching them. It's crazy. Ready for our next question? I guess so. 
Okay, now since you got that Defender, what is your next big purchase? Ah, the Defender. The next big purchase. Is it an X3? No. <laughs> Those things are expensive. My next big purchase, if everything works out, I'm going to buy a field. Nice. I'm going to put a nice nice five-wire five barbed fence around it, build me a pond in the middle, mm. get me a bunch of cows and stick in it. And then if YouTube goes down, I'll have a few cows to farm at least. Maybe buy a bigger field and do it again. <laughs> the bigger the bigger the field, the more cows. The more cows, the... Do you like farming? I don't know. No, not really, <laughs> but maybe cows will be easier. The problem with farming right now is that I'm only farming goats and chickens. Chickens don't cause me any problems. Cause and you Kanye. Can let them loot. Yeah, and Kanye, big turkey. <laughs> I got a little bit of everything. I get. I wanted. I started out farming. Well, here's the thing. I actually saw a flare, and I was like, "Huh, he got goats. I bet that'd be fun." So I just did it, just because I was like, "I don't. I ain't nothing down here, around here to do. Might as well do something. At least have goats to go talk to every now and again." So I decided to get me a couple goats, fenced in this area. I was like, "Dude, this is gonna be great. They'll have like babies every four months or half a year or something. Then I, they don't grow up. And I can eat them or something. Put them on a pizza." Or I can go sell them. Well, goats did not work out that way for me. Okay? They reproduced all that good stuff. And then they just died. One at one at a time. Pretty steady rate. So, and it's, it's a different random reason every time. One time it might have been that they had randomly may had worms and died like in a day. One of them might have been bloated. One of them, Steve, chewed its horns off. Chad... Got snake bit? How does that even happen? I've had the worst luck with goats ever, and now I'm down to three. And I mean, I kind of want to get more, but at the same time, every one I've ever had's died. Would you want to try a different breed of goats, or? I don't know. That's the thing. Is one better than the other? You know a lot about goats, right? Yeah, I have. T- yeah. I have goats for four each, but like we only have them for about five months. Mm-hmm. But we have boar boar goats. I'm pretty sure that's the name of them. I mean, they do fine. We give them dewormer, and they're, I mean, they're healthy goats. But mm-hmm. which mine has as much ground as they could ever imagine. They have like two acres of both, sh- like mountain, browse field. They have a big water. They have a creek. They have everything that they would naturally ever need, but they just are so weird. I don't know. Like they have so much space. They could. They wouldn't have to walk on the same dirt. For a year, if they didn't want to, but they just—they're just weird. Well, you've had goats a lot, right? How long right. have you had goats? How many? How many like th- years in 4-H? Yeah, three years. And yeah. what? Five months at a time? Yeah, yeah, maybe a little more, but mm-hmm. for three years I've been having them. What, how many both. do you usually get? We each get one. Okay, yes. and they do pretty good. You've never had any uh, problems with them? I mean, they get every now Worms. and then they get like maybe a little sick, but they're for the most part they're great. But How like, do you tell if they're sick? They're wobbling like a zombie? Because no. mine's always like a zombie. <laughs> no. They're just dead. Normally, I don't know. Normally, they're normally they're fine. They really don't get sick. Maybe, like, they might cough a little, but then we give them dewormer. Well, sometimes, uh, like, yeah. if you check, like, you pull their ad lid down mm-hmm. a little bit, and if it's really pasty white, it might mean that they have, like, worms or something. Mm-hmm. But if it's, like, a reddish, pinkish, that means it's pretty healthy and good. Yeah. Mine's always been fine one day. The next day I go out there, they're laying over in a ditch somewhere, and they're literally like doing this, when their eyes are crossed and in the back of their head. They don't know what's going on, and then they're just dead. And it's crazy. And I do not like that. Okay, chicken, it never, <laughs> chickens never get sick, but they get eaten. And that's fine. If something gets eaten by a coyote, I don't really care. That's fine. It's fair game. Steve's there now, so yeah. he helps. Steve helps a lot. Nothing has ever got gone since Steve's been here. Except for the thing Steve's killed, which was a duck that never made it on video. And he, it was his best friend for about three hours. And then it died (laughs) because he tackled it over and over. And then, I mean, the goats, I kind of want more goats. Wait, what was the question about farm animals again? What was your next farm animal? What was that exact question? What was going to be your next farm animal, I'm pretty sure. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like the goats and everything. I'd kind of like to get more goats, but I'm also pretty interested in an emu. That'd be pretty cool. I think it would be. Mm-hmm. They're like, let me pull up what an emu looks like just for you guys who don't know. Yeah. They're pretty cool. Emu, bird. They're like a giant ostrich, but 
but they're not an ostrich, okay? I was actually, I actually built a fence, a pen, just for ostriches, and I quickly realized that not only are they extremely dangerous, because they, you have to build an ostrich fence expecting them to run full speed into it, and they're like two, three hundred pounds and like nine foot tall, so that was a, that was out of the question right there. And also it was a scam. So I, I almost got scammed on ostriches from South Africa. And I did get scammed from goats from New England. And I was like, this is the best deal I've ever seen in my life. Too good to be true. It actually was. And I almost bought ostriches. That would have been even worse. KG almost got scammed by buying ostriches from South Africa. What would you do if you had emus? Like, would you... Like... Would you just have them as pets or what? Here's the thing. Everything to do with an emu, from what I've seen, is extremely expensive. Like, they're... Apparently, they cost a lot. Like, I found some on Craigslist for about 400 each. A mating pair. So, that's 800 bucks. But, apparently, they lay gigantic eggs. If you, yeah, you if they hatch the eggs, then you could sell the emus and make more money. If you hatch the eggs and, like... Then you could just keep repopulating and all that good stuff. That was the plan with the goats, too, and that kind of, you know, put me down. So I don't know how I feel about all that stuff now. The goats, that was supposed to be what the goats were. Let them have babies and then sell them or something, but they all died. I don't know how. They look like they'd do pretty cool. You you know much about emus? No. Do you know that Australia declared war on them? Yes, I do. And know lost? That does. That's, Do you they, know about they, that? They no. lost twice. Yeah. The like, emus, would the emus kick them or what? They just... The emus... So, apparently, they were, like, destroying, mm-hmm. what, farms and stuff? I guess, yeah. And destroying. then they were... I don't know if they're invasive to Australia or not, but they're there. And, uh, you know, the country declared war on them, and it lasted about a month, and the emus won. Because the humans surrendered, <laughs> and the emus did not. It's called the Great Emu War of 1912 or something like that. It was pretty crazy. I, I wish I was there, but I wasn't. But yeah, I mean, emus run crazy in Australia. Why are they $400 here? Go to Australia, keep a few. Yeah. And bring them home. It's probably not too easy to sh- stuff them in a box and ship them <laughs> over here, is it? <laughs> but I was thinking if I got emus, I could put them in there with the bunker and let them guard it. Yeah. In case someone tried to go rob it, they could to kill him or something. They look pretty mean. They are mean. Apparently, they'll, like, kill you. Maybe... You if see that thing running at you. Yeah. I'd be scared for how my life. tall are they? I want to see how big they are compared to a human. There they are, a baby, but they ain't gonna be a baby for long. Mm-mm. That's pretty much a Velociraptor from Jurassic. Oh, here they are. It's pretty much a Velociraptor from Jurassic Park. So they're about they're about as tall as a human when they stretch out. And apparently they're a lot nicer than an ostrich. What is this thing right here? I think. Um, yeah, you gotta get something like that. That'd be cool. <laughs> what is that? I think that might be an. It's a. That's an emu lock bird. So that's like an emu, just a little bit, maybe a weird variant or something. Look at the feet on that thing. Dude, that feet are massive. But yeah, dude, I'd like to get me a couple emus. Have some good omelets. That's an ostrich now. No, that's an emu. Believe it or not, I learned a lot about ostriches. There's like a d- couple different breeds, and the black ostriches. Those are the mean ones. Watch out. Watch your back. But yeah, that's probably the next farm animal. If I can find some. There's not many on Craigslist. I've only found two listings so far. It's crazy. What if you got eggs and then try to incubate them? If I got eggs, I'd either eat them or let them sit on them. Could you imagine an emu sitting on eggs? That'd be, have, have, that'd be something That'd be a big see. nest. It would be. If you were to try to incubate them, it'd be hard to find an incubator big enough to fit them in it. That'd be a big incubator. You have to just go buy a house and just turn the heat up or something. <laughs> Dude, I bet that'd be crazy, though. Then you'd have to feed a baby emu. Could you imagine that? I mean, if... if Looks, what does it eat? The, I don't know. What's an emu even eat? There's a nest right there. It's, it's a big nest. Oh, Gosh, wow. That is huge. And it just, like, lays down on top of them. I mean, I guess that's normal, but... Yeah, next farm animal for KG, definitely going to be an emu, or a goat, or a dog, or a duck, or a guinea, or a turkey. There's a lot of options. Yeah. Turkeys would be, like, like Kanye, more turkeys than Kanye. Kanye needs some hints. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Because he, he needs something to be doing. And then the next question is, 
I know your dream hunt is a elk. Yes. So what is your dream fish to catch? Hmm. Dream fish. Um, I think pike would be cool in Canada because apparently there's yeah, a they, lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot in Canada. And like, just go up there and like just whip them out. And people say musky and pike are pretty much they they look closer. Yeah. But musky are a lot harder harder to catch. But I think mm-hmm. in pike are easier if they're in. They're like, probably easier to catch. I don't know. I'd also maybe. like to go somewhere where maybe trout fishing, where you can get out in the water and you can literally see every single trout. Mm. A I think trout, that'd be cool. A trout like lake. That'd be maybe. Good. Or like a really deep stream, but that you can still see through the bottom of. That'd be crazy. Yeah. To where you could literally watch the fish eat it. As for bass fishing, I use bass fish a lot, but you're just kind of hoping you catch something. Yeah. That's kind of hard. I kind of burn out. Maybe not burn out, but I've definitely lost a lot of interest in bass fishing. What's your interest in now? Um, like I doing like podcasts, hunting. Yeah, doing podcasts. I do like hunting a lot though. Trapping, trapping's fun, but it's just a little. It's uh, you have to go out every day. Which yeah, it's isn't time a consuming. It is time consuming. And then if something messes up your set, you have to redo it and check yeah. them every day. For a good tra- trap line, you're gar- you have to set aside like at least an hour and a half each day to go check it. And then if something actually happens... Then it's an, at least another two hours. Yeah, whether you catch a f- animal and you have to remake, or your, your trap goes off, you have to reset the trap, or you kill an animal, and you have to do that. And the biggest thing about trapping for me is, like, it's at least an hour and a half every day to check the traps, and then there's a variable of four hours that m- you might have to spend four hours cleaning animals, or you might spend no animals, or you might spend no time, and you just don't know. It's hard to plan when you're trapping. But I think if I go out, do a couple week trapping things where I can plan on stuff happening. Or if you have a big enough trap line, generally you always have something most of the time if it's big enough and in a good enough spot. Yeah, that's what I think about trapping though mm-hmm. and fishing. But dream fishing trip, I want it to go with a crystal clear deep trout. Mine would probably have to be mahi mahi. They look pretty cool. What are they? Look like at dolphin fish? Is that yeah? It's yeah. yeah. Big, colorful, big yeah. They're billboard pre- looking fish. Yeah, they're yeah. have like a big head. They're pretty cool. Man, that would be cool. Do you people's, know how they catch them? I mean, like if they, you I'm pretty them. sure people go on charters and stuff to catch them. What are they? They do? taste good. I tried one before in fish tacos. Really? They were really good. Are they just like? What? Well, how do they live? Do they just live out? I don't understand deep sea fishing. I don't fishing. know what they eat. I don't know though. what they're doing. I like deep sea fishing. Do it's they just fun. like swim in the middle of the ocean forever? <laughs> probably. And do nothing? Sounds about right. If my, I was a f- what? My dream fish to catch would probably be either a sailfish or a marlin. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Blue mar- you know marlins are dinner? huge. I yeah. think he has the world record, or he did at one time, of one of those big pointy nose looking fish <laughs> it is either the world record in total or world record spear fished he oh, speared, he speared it fished? yeah oh, that's crazy it took him a long time to actually get it and to mm. measure it and all that stuff but it's crazy it's awesome but uh your your dream fishing you just said the mahi mahi mm-hmm. i think swordfish would be cool but yeah. you they're, know they're dangerous can... people say that like they die from if they like jump on the boat and stuff yeah. and hit, I mean... hit people because you can see in the videos, they'll jump like right. what, 20 feet from the yeah. boat. And if they were just jumping in the boat, mm. shaking a sword like that, it'd take you uh, hours to yeah. reel in, too. Yeah, they're crazy. Yeah, It's hard. Stuff like that's hard. I don't like fishing like that because it takes forever to reel it in. And then you're... Which I went with deer meat for dinner, and I we was deep sea fishing. And I'd always give them a good 10-minute fight, and then they'd break off every time, so I didn't really know. It was just like I was just fighting for no reason because they always kept breaking off. I need to go back and... Try to figure out what I'm doing, though. Mm -hmm. I was doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Has to be. So, next question is, do you think we will go back to Virginia and get another double in does? Do I think we'll get a double in does? Yes, again. I think we will. It wasn't wasn't, that hard. No, it wasn't. We did it with muzzle odors. So, Mm -hmm. for you guys who don't know, in that video that I was talking about earlier, we killed two does separately in the same stand within 60 seconds because the does did not care. He shot one, the rest walked up, I shot it, and then we just went to recover it. Yeah. Like, there was, let's say let's say there was two groups, because I think there was. Yeah. One field, they was all in the same field. One group walked into range, shot it. It was like three does. The, my doe actually ran away and died. Hit, 
the other two does kind of just like stood there and ran 10 feet and looked around. The other do- patch of does, group of does, didn't really care at all. And then they just came on down eventually and we shot one of those two. I don't, I'm not a fan of muzzle loaders. I'll say that. They didn't bleed. <laughs> and we almost lost it. Crossbows is going to have to be fun. We'll have to use crossbows next year. Yeah. Let's see. Get a little bit closer to the mic next time. Crossbows will have to be better <laughs> next time. <laughs> yeah. I like crossbows. I like anything to do with bows. Because instead of a little hunk of lead that's just going in and maybe doing something, you have a big blade that big and it's cutting everything. Mm-hmm. We also, you also shot a deer with a muzzle loader. The right amount of powder, perfect thing. You shot it right in the shoulder blade, and it didn't even go through. Yeah. We don't actually know, but it definitely hit she the just, ground. She just fell down. And then I thought up, we had her. Off. I she really did. Ba- she was barely even limping. But she was laying down, like d- she laid laying down. down. And she laid down and flopped, and then just stopped moving for like five minutes. We're like, then, we got her. And then just stood up and walked off. And then I aimed at it. I was gonna go ahead and shoot it, and then the cap snapped, and the Powder never ignited. We was go- I would have killed it, dude. I was dead on. I was like, all right, I got it. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. That was crazy. You think we can get a bear this year? I mean, we we'll try. We saw it. it. It was, if it would got probably like t- easily 20 or more yards, you would have got it. Yeah, we was close. I, we was pretty close to it. I wouldn't have seen it. The scope on the, it's only out to 40 yards. So, like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's what it's like. I mean, we could probably go a little farther. Yeah. That's our comfortable. Yeah, sport. you're just hoping at 60. With a yeah, I just I saw like a black yeah. shadow. I was like, oh, what's that? And then it just came on down. Yeah. It was crazy. Just, we just looked up and there's this black thing just moving. And it was a decent way out there. And then it was it was going to cross our path. It was it was. It was going to. It might have smelled something. It may have. Did we check the wind? Not sure, but like at the same time, it wasn't like it didn't run away. It just looked up and it was like, yeah. oh, "I'm heading back." It was going to come right in on us. It was if it would have continued on the path it was on, it was going to be within twenty yards. That have been, and it was like clear through there, so you could, yeah. got a good shot on it. But then it stopped at sixty. We could see that it started turning back the other direction. Then we we didn't shoot it, which was a probably good decision. But then it just walked off, and it disappeared. You know me. Then someone scared us and yeah, we about shot it. <laughs> we about killed somebody. That wasn't on the video, but we about killed somebody thinking they were a bear. They may or may not have been growling like a bear too. But <laughs> someone almost died, and it wasn't the bear. What's your favorite caliber? Caliber. Hmm. It's a good question. What's your favorite caliber? Probably six point five. Really? Why is that? I mean, it's a it shoots pretty flat. Flat. It's. I mean, it's good for 200 yards without no drop. It doesn't kick any. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite caliber? Mm, probably uh, 300 blackout. I use that a lot when I'm deer hunting. You do use 300 blackout a lot. And you suppress it, too, right? Mm-hmm. Does it kill deer pretty good? Yeah. One time for my second deer, um, I shot it, and with the suppressor on, it, it didn't even know where we were. It ran straight towards the blind and about hit us. It, it laid down 10 yards in front of us, and that was crazy. The one thing I do like about Virginia, well, there's a lot I like about it, but one thing that's extremely different than here is the deer limits. Tell us about your limits in Virginia. One thing I will say is that they can't bait, though. They're not allowed yeah, to bait deer. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. So go ahead. How many so we limits? get two bucks in our county, and then if I hunt statewide, I get three bucks. So that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Then I have un- pretty much you can you buy doe tags for as much as you want. I got nine deer last year and two bucks. The rest were does. But. So you can pretty much unlimited does. Yeah, you just keep on buying doe tags. Dang, how many deers have you killed total in your life? Do you know? Like, pretty sure thirty nine. Really? Yeah. What about you? Uh, I think about six or seven. I don't know how many I've killed. Not a lot, because in my exact, if I only hunted here, I could only kill one buck a year and one doe a year, and that doe has to be with a bow. Your rules are really weird. But I can bait, but at the end of the day, it don't exactly, I don't know. It helps a lot, but you can only kill two deer. Three years ago, we could kill three does, but now we can't do that anymore. 
Is it because doe populations are down or no, like deer populations? No, there's deer everywhere, and they hit everybody's cars. I don't know exactly why they did that. I think they said there was blue tongue, and maybe a few deer died, but they completely. I think that they may have over-regulated that because I don't think it actually affected that much. Which it was also patchy, like the diseases were kind of mm-hmm. patchy. Some places right. were didn't have any deer left. Some places never even got touched. So it was really patchy. Didn't you have that um, one deer die in the creek? Yeah, there was there was just you could go to creek there. See, like I had people friends, and they were like, "Yeah, you go down to the property pond or whatever, and there's like six bucks all laying in a line dead. Because whenever they got blue tongue, they'd go to water and then just die. And so in creeks, in the ponds, there's a bunch of deer everywhere. And I actually found I found one, and that's the only one I found around here though. That's the only one that I know of. I'm sure there's probably more, but I don't, looking at the populations, I don't think it really affected us that much. Or if it did, then they came back pretty good. My genetics on my property is trash. <laughs> there's no, I've not seen a buck on camera yet, and it's July. That's that's not a good thing. Do you have any does on camera? Or a nice bit of does? I have three. That's Anybody. not good at all. I mean, that's, but, not, um, that's I, not bad if they keep on coming in, and they may attract other deer, but like, It'd be nice if you had more. I mean, better. they're here. They're just not walking in front of the camera. I have my camera in front of a deer feeder right now, just, you know, throw out corn to squirrels and stuff. But the deer have avoided it completely. I don't know if they're scared of the sound it makes because it is electric, which they, could be a really good possibility. They should get used to it, though. They'll get used to it. It's only been up for like a couple months or something. Mm-hmm. So they'll get used to it. As for now, the squirrels love it and raccoons love it, too. What is the equipment you use for your podcast? Like what um, we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, we got camera, 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 ring light on all these. The ring lights are kind of okay. I mean, it's we're definitely not going to be dark in here. They might be a little bit overpowered, but I guess it's up to you guys, though. And then I got a TV. That's cool. It's got emus on it right now. It's a cool TV. I mean, it's, it's a little bit overkill, but... It works pretty cool. I like it. I think mm-hmm. that's really cool, especially like when we talk about emus. Yeah, I can pull it up, I'll pull up a picture of an emu for people who's had no mm-hmm. idea they even existed. Cause I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people. And comment below, did you even know that emus existed at all? Cause there's a good chance you probably didn't. Most they people, lay blue eggs. Most people know about ostriches though. Yeah, and they never think about emus. Cause I mean. People actually farm emus. Mm-hmm. Kind of popular, too. It's just they're expensive to get into. It's $800 a pair. Yeah. I guess once you once you get into it and have, like, have them start re- reproducing, it's not as expensive then, but still you got to pay for the feed and whatever yeah. they eat. Food, maintenance, and I don't, I don't exactly know what they eat. I know ostriches just eat grass, though. Mm-hmm. They're probably like a big turkey, though. But also, emus, um, how, what their, like, death rate is. So, like, it, are they hard to keep alive like goats are? That could, And are they hard to doctor when they do? But, like, if you get something like what? What's a really hardy animal? Like a cow? You give it food and it, mm-hmm. it yeah. never really has any problems? If they're yeah. like that, that'll be great. That's why I'd kind of like to have cows because, like, mm-hmm. you put a fence around them. You make sure that they have enough grass to eat. Besides that, unless they're, Mm -hmm. I don't know, upside down, then they're probably fine. Yeah. And after that, you kind of just leave them and then come back and just, right, you're good. I mean, the only thing that really could happen to them is bloat. I mean, that's the worst thing, really. And that probably don't really happen that often with a cow. I mean, coyotes on little ones, but besides that, mm-hmm. nothing really is going to eat a bit a full-grown cow. Unless it's an alien, but they don't <laughs> come around that often. <laughs> What's some collabs you're going to do in the future? Oh, in the future? I don't know. It's a good question. I think it just comes and goes. I guess. What about, um... Is there about anyone, like, that you haven't talked to that you really want to do? I think... I, I'm not for sure. It's probably up to him. But I think eventually I'll probably do one with Flair. Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty cool. I do yeah. I do have analytics that says mine and his audience are like extremely similar. Now of course his audience is way bigger than mine, mm-hmm. but the little audience that I have compared to his are very similar to his. So I do know that. And they've been for a long time. 
And we've talked about it before, but then the whole Corona thing shut down planes and everything. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know. We're just we'll we'll do would something. Would he come here or would you go to Nebraska? Nebraska, Iowa, somewhere out there. Yeah, somewhere out west. I don't know. It depends. Maybe maybe both eventually. That'd be cool. Why did you start your podcast? Because no one ever invited me on their podcast, so I figured I'd just start <laughs> one. It's Have you ever been in a podcast before? No, I had to start my own. Not many people has podcasts in the outdoor. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, do you guys know of any outdoor podcast that's like, well, outdoor YouTube podcast? No. no. The, only... the Guggen Squad. That's one. But how often do they do theirs? I'm not sure. I know yeah. they have. I know they have one. They do it some. Yeah, the Guggen Cast. I know. I know Duck Dynasty does one, but that's not really YouTube though. That's yeah. more of a TV. They started theirs up pretty recently too, yeah. didn't they? I know that the Meat Eater. He has one, mm-hmm. but I've, it's he's more of a TV show guy. Mm-hmm. But like, as for immediate outdoor YouTubers, or at least the ones I know, no one had started a podcast. And even, like, they've never even been on podcasts. Because I would search them up, and I'd be like, hey, I want to see what that guy's like on a podcast. And he wouldn't be there, because there's no podcast. So I was like, hey, I'll just do that, and I'll get a bunch of outdoor people on it and let them be heard. That's and in the meantime, my- just... Do this. Have you ever been on a podcast? No, it was my first one. Have you ever wanted to be on a podcast? I mean, it is interesting. It's yeah. pretty cool. I What's like the it. coolest part about being on a podcast? Probably just the probably headphones. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah it is. All the gear and everything. You guys like? Cool. I mean, it, the he- just the headphones makes it sound cool. High tech mm-hmm. stuff right there. It just sounds yeah. cool. Like it's not even anything special. It's just hearing hearing everything that's going on, but through here. Mm-hmm. Like we can whisper. Like And they're not, and they're not uncomfortable either. Right. Mm-mm, they're nice. They feel pretty good. Yeah. I'm happy I got these. Good purchase. Yeah, they are. These are probably my best purchase ever. That's a good question. Except my, for the Defender. That's a good question, actually. Yeah. What is my best purchase? Mm-hmm. You at, you talked about the Defender earlier. I took you guys out on the Defender last night. It's nice, yes. ain't it? It's yes. smooth. It's yeah. crazy. The smooth. I think the suspension is the number one thing about that. Like, compared to the Mule, which doesn't have a suspension, the Defender glides over stuff. Right. Like, I'll take that thing over a bridge, which has potholes all in it. And I'll just, the faster I go, the smoother it is. And it, like, the the cab or whatever just sits still going, and the tires just go, they'll make up for the difference. And I just When we were going down that big hill yesterday, I mean, it was really steep, but at the same time... It was yeah. it was pretty smooth. Like there was big rocks in there too. Yeah, there was big rocks, and our wheels was going over things, and the suspension was just making up for it. Other than us just being like leaning forward, I mean, yeah, that it was smooth as can be. It was crazy, and even whenever you're going like around a curve, well, I mean, I, I guess everything's pretty smooth, like just, mm-hmm. but like it's just like you just slope. Yeah, it's cool. That's the best thing about it. That's probably one of my favorite purchases because I use it a lot and. Yeah. For only having it as long as I have, I've, like, used it a ton. Mm-hmm. I drive it more than my truck. <laughs> I've got almost, like, 2,000 miles on it. Wow. And that's a lot for yeah. that's a, nice a four-wheeler thing. thing in a few months. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I have, like, almost s- a year now. Six, 600 on my four-wheeler. Yeah. We had it for, we got it in, like, not that long ago, like a few months. Yeah. But. yeah. I wear it out. <laughs> What's your favorite thing that you have purchased or anything like that? I mean, I like, I have some guns that are pretty cool, but like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really like riding foolers and stuff. That's pretty fun. Yeah. You got horses. Yes. Tell us about that. Because I've thought about getting a horse, but then I realized. They're a lot of work. Yeah. They are. They are. I don't want to do that right now. You got to have like a farrier come clean their feet and stuff. Yeah. Um, And then also you got to make sure they're nice and healthy and everything. Mm -hmm. And go deworm them because they can get worms too. But mm-hmm. I mean, most of the time you just switch out the dewormers and everything. Yeah, they're like a four wheeler, but that you have to 
feed mm-hmm. all yeah. the time, whether you ride them or not. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like, you know what? I'd rather probably just buy, buy a four wheeler. And <laughs> if I don't want to ride it for this month, I don't have to feed it. And if yeah. it dies, that's okay. It's, I don't have to bury it's, it. It's a machine. <laughs> yeah. It's a machine, not an animal, but I'd really like to like hunt off of one. I don't know how possible that'd be. I think it would be possible to squirrel hunt off one. It might be easier to do like a mule or something that would like Like carry more of your stuff. Like a animal Um, mule? Yeah, like a pack mule. Yeah, I was actually thinking about getting a mule, but I'd say they're just as bad (laughs) as a horse. Yeah, Yeah, they can be annoying too. But I mean, they can like um, stomp on predators. Like if a predator's in there, they can Mm -hmm. also be kind of like a guard animal. I, I was thinking about before I got Steve. I was looking for something to protect the goats, and I almost got a donkey. And I was really close to buying one until I realized, oh, that's not a donkey. That was a mini donkey. And so it's like, it ain't going to do anything. (laughs) They're like a mini donkey. They're like, donkeys, great for predators. They're like, mini donkeys, they get eaten by cows. Yeah. That's it. My question is, sure, you can start asking yours. Wait, but donkeys and mules. Um, Mules are supposed to be more... um, like they can hold more weight and more uh can pull more stuff Mm -hmm. and donkeys are supposed to be more closer to a horse and yeah really i think a mule is like a hybrid isn't it i think it's like a cross between a horse and a donkey yeah and then with male being a horse and female being a donkey or it could be the other way around but if you do it the other way around which is not a mule it turns into something that's not really that useful at all. A zebra is pretty much a colorful mule. You can yeah. do a zebra and a donkey, and it makes a z donk. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty yeah. cool. I don't know what they're good for, but they do them. They look they're cool. pretty much they look. They're like a horse, donkey, and mule, kind of like mix, but it's, with it's with weird. colorful too. You can get a donk. I mean, you can get a zebra for like a couple thousand dollars. I don't know why you'd want one, but you can get right. one. Just Slayer. look at it, I guess. Has um, he got one? Um, he he's been to like a bunch auctions. of auctions where they have like a bunch of um donkeys or. Zebras, zebras and donkeys mixed, and they have it's weird. Like I mean, their feet are like donkeys, and then their bodies like a zebra and everything. It's weird. I mean, out there in Nebraska, I mean, I guess you gotta come up with something to do. <laughs> yeah, it's about like here, but just more farming. <laughs> yeah, here it's more hunting. Out there, you gotta be creative with farming and come up with a yeah. z donk, whatever that is. <laughs> Farm donkeys for no reason. Uh, Ask some questions. Now we're gonna move into more. Less YouTube oriented yeah. and more just overall fan questions. Life, like. like lifestyle questions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so my first one is: Does Mammy really like to be in the videos and be a part of the YouTube channel? She does and she doesn't. She doesn't because she thinks she has to get ready before <laughs> she does. It. But she does because she doesn't have anything better to do. So it's kind of like either way. Yeah. And then my well, second. here's a question for you guys. Okay. What would you like to see Mammy do? Uh, what yeah. are the options? Anything. As long as it, she can do it and not die. But if she does die, that's part of the game, you know? Uh, <laughs> maybe um, have Mammy, like, try to do a gaming thing. A gaming video with yeah. Mammy? <laughs> that would be cool. You know, she used to play Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> she would drive cars in a straight line and mow down everybody in front of her. <laughs> It was you crazy. should do that. Yeah. Hunter calls the wild with Mammy. We should put her on the flight simulator. <laughs> See how she got does. She on could that. probably do pretty good. Yeah. It's very. <laughs> no, she couldn't. No. That'd be funny. What about Mammy shooting the fifty cal? That'd be pretty crazy. You have to have like two pillows in between her so it doesn't blow off her arm or something. Just let her pistol. <laughs> Dad. Dude, you guys saw it, but you didn't see it. The stock folds. Uh, I, I saw, I saw, I saw the, the part, video. yeah, where it, it doesn't. Goes. Why do you need a folding stock 50 cal? Right, it's not you're, you're not going to shoot, shoot it one handed. I mean, it's been done. We've done it before. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's it's a heavy gun. We could do Mammy, uh, Mammy versus Mammy fishing challenge with Ethan's grandma. <laughs> That'd be cool. <gasps> That'd be yeah. funny. That'd be very funny. All right, let's go to my second question. What farm animal? Um, what is your favorite farm animal that you have now? I think Steve. <laughs> Steve's cool. He is really useful. He's a big boy, though. <laughs> yeah, he's huge. You could ride him, hundred yeah. percent, and he'd love it too. <laughs> you can put you can put Steve in a chokehold or body slam, and he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you want to get another like breed that Steve is? I think I'd like to get a, like another Steve. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, another Steve. Yeah, I think I'd like to get another Steve. Would Give you get it. a male or female? I don't know. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of either way. Mm-hmm. Either either way. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. I'd figure it out. Whichever <laughs> one's biggest. I just want a really big dog. Yeah. That I can ride and... If I could just have another Steve and let Steve and Steve too, that's probably what I'd name it too. Just Steve too, and just let them fight each other, like play fight, and just wrestle. That'd be awesome. Then I'd be the ref, the commentator. I'd, I'd be the ref that like comes in and starts fighting against two on one. That'd be awesome. Next thing you know, they're both standing on Kendall and Kim's just looking up in the sky, pass out. I wonder what Steve would do if there was magically another one of him in the pen. What would he do? Would he be like, oh, that's just Kanye, and then just, like, walk past it? I feel like you might think it's, like, a coyote or something. I don't know. You'd really have, you'd probably have to take him out of the pen and then get them used to each other then and then put them back in to see how they do with the animals. I feel like he'd do, I feel like, I feel like he'd actually just go and be instant friends, because he's instant yeah. friends with everything that's not scary looking because like you can take if you take like a sketchy looking dog Mm -hmm. like you can tell when a dog's sketchy looking Mm -hmm. it's like just looking like hunting he'll go crazy over that but then if there's just another dog just kind of walking and like carefree he can he sees that like they're not if you get like a more of a puppy or a younger great pyrenees he'd probably like it better because it's like a younger one and he went if it's an older grumpier one He'd probably just leave it and not really mess with them. Mm-hmm. But a puppy, he'd probably really like to hang out with it. Yeah. You know how like um like a coyote or even a deer, like whenever it sees you, it kind of like takes a look and like mm-hmm. is real like careful. If you walk up to Steve and start doing that, he'll get all serious. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> He's like, is, some, is, there something, is there something wrong? How do you like Kanye? I like Kanye. He's just, he's just kind of there. He don't really do anything at all. Is he annoying since he gobbles like every every time you do something? He can yeah. be because I'm like trying to make a video and he just keeps screaming at me. It's like, what do you want? Go go over there or do something else. Leave me alone. I'm trying to make a video. He's uh, he's cool though. He doesn't. Whenever I go throw out corn, like I have cracked corn, that's mm-hmm. generally what I feed. So I, I I usually feed either whole corn or cracked corn. Now, I usually just do cracked corn Mm because the goats are less likely to eat it all. And the goats don't need to eat a lot of corn. Mm -hmm. So, I just thought cracked corn. And Kanye can't find it. He just, he (laughs) says, he can't see. Even though he's a turkey. That's crazy. Yeah. Most turkey, like, most turkeys, I'd think, would see it, but. I mean, he can see the whole corn. He just can't see the little corn. (laughs) I don't know. Might have been why they sold him to you. Probably. No, they gave him to me because he kept flogging the (laughs) guy's wife. (laughs) All right, let's go. Question three. What did your dad think about you working with him on the um, mine? He he was actually like, you come with me. And I was like, hmm, all right, I guess. It was uh, was all right. I don't like it. How do you even like it? I mean, it's just, it's kind of interesting, but then it can get old pretty quick. Mm-hmm. It's also really hot, which is just part of the job, but I'd rather make a YouTube video. Yeah. Would you do that if YouTube went away? That wouldn't be my first choice, but I would do it if I needed to. And I still will do it if I need to. If he needs help or something, I'll definitely go help mm-hmm. for like a week at a time. But I can't do it the whole time, otherwise I couldn't make videos. And also in the same video, did mm-hmm. you like um, driving big equipment? and also like making your range and everything did you like driving that big equipment yeah it's um it's fun it's fun when it's air conditioner yeah yeah that helps a lot but then like yeah creating the range we used we use big equipment because it's all my dad's and stuff but Mm -hmm. he can he that's the only reason we's able to build a bunker Mm -hmm. is because he can dig a hole and knows what to do with it Mm -hmm. and then we also i also did the range and then the food plot, because I had mm-hmm. knocked down all those yeah. big trees. And so that's really all important with all that. But, uh, yeah, I, it's fun. I can do, I can do, I think I can do pretty good on it. I don't know what I do on a tractor. <laughs> Tractor's I, I, not that bad. It ain't? It's, what is it it's like? It's kind of like a manual car some, somewhat, but then again. It's yeah, and then you got the easier. bucket and the gears. It's not that hard. Really? Yeah, we drive it around sometimes if we need it. Did you see Flair's new 
That's pretty big. Mm-hmm. It was giant. Ours is not that big. He, he, he had a hard time figuring out how to drive it. If he can't figure it out, I sure can't figure it out. <laughs> if he can't figure out how to drive a tractor, I might as well not even get on one. <laughs> I'll just stick to my lawnmower. <laughs> big old zero turn. Yeah, I ain't even got one of those. I got a Ford. We have a Ford lawnmower. Breaks down. How ironic. <laughs> All right, let's see. What did you like best in school? I know you said that you liked school, but what did you, what did you like best in it? Like, overall, mm-hmm. I think the best part about school for me was just getting to go and see people every day. Mm-hmm. I think that's fun because you could talk to different people. I had like eight different classes, so you had eight yeah. different groups of people you could go mm-hmm. talk to. Was there a lot of fans? No. They didn't care. <laughs> they was like, oh, that's cool. And then like, okay, anyways. Yeah, they didn't care, which is, I wouldn't, I mean, I, I guess if they did think it was cool, that's cool. But like, they didn't freak out because I was yeah. probably always aggravating them by trying to talk to them. <laughs> I got in trouble a lot for just standing up and going and walking around the class, just talking to people. <laughs> and they'd always be like, why are you standing up? Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Like they would go if they ever separated me, it wouldn't help because I'd just stand up and walk over there. And half the teachers would just like accept it, and they'd be like, Okay, I had one class, and you know how like the teacher will assign seats, mm-hmm. right? We got we got assigned seats every like month or something, mm-hmm. and the teacher didn't even uh give me an assigned seat because she knew I was just gonna sit in that corner <laughs> anyhow, right by the door. Uh oh, do y'all hear that? Yeah, here it's getting what a little staticky. What is that? Static. You think it's ghost? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Let me check our connections here. Our Philly connection. Uh, that was cool. That's the first time it's happened. <laughs> Static something. If y'all heard that, tell me. Because I don't know if you guys heard it. And if you did hear it, I need to know that. But if it does it again, we may, I don't know, look into it. All right. Do you guys like school? Uh, it's not I bad. Do. Yeah. What grade are you guys in? I'm in so. going in tenth. Which is what? Tenth grade. Is that like high school? Yeah. What Which do you one? have in your school? We have freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Yes. Yeah, I'm going so. in sophomore. I'm going to be a sophomore. Okay. Now. Yeah. Um, I'm going into seventh grade middle school. Okay. Do you guys like school though? Mm-hmm. It's not bad. I like it. Yeah, it's fun. I'm kind of still in school. I'm in college. Yeah. I don't like it as much because it's all online. Yeah. Do you like do you like college when you're in school? Um. All the people were kind of weird, and they didn't want to talk to me. So no, <laughs> they didn't want to talk to me. They weren't very talkative. They were like, walk in, do the work, then leave. I'm like, why? Why don't you want to <laughs> I mean, sit around for ten minutes and something. talk to me? But yeah. Some people were cool. Most of them weren't. Just saying. <laughs> Sorry if you go to school with me, but you should have talked to me more. <laughs> I had one really good class, and we were, it was accounting, and we was all real talkative, and it was great. I also didn't sit, I didn't sit down in that class <laughs> either. When I wasn't sit, when I wasn't standing up, I had this entire lane cleared out, mm-hmm. and I would roll my chair down and back and forth just the whole time. <laughs> it was great. It was, they were pretty good chairs, too. <laughs> Had good wheels. They were oiled up. So y'all actually got rolly chairs in college? Oh, yeah. They were good. Ones too. <laughs> All right. What would be your favorite... What would be like a dream or a favorite car that you would want to buy or get? What do y'all think about electric cars? I mean, they're cool. With gas prices right now, it would be kind of convenient. I mean, kind of would be nice. Because yeah. I'm really interested in electric cars. But Ethan... Says that if it ain't running on gas fumes, he don't want to touch it. <laughs> but I, I'm like, I don't. If you got an electric car, would you want to get like, like a Tesla or something? Yeah, would you want a Tesla or would you want another brand? I would like a Tesla, but I, I um, I'd rather have a truck. But I don't mm-hmm. like the Tesla truck. Yeah. If you've seen the Ford Lightning, have you saw that? No. Uh, it's I called an F. I don't know. I don't, it's like a. It's pretty much an F one hundred and fifty, but it's completely electric. That thing's really cool. But if I had to choose, it would be a Chevy one like that. Mm-hmm. But they don't make one like that. Do you like? Do you like Ford or do you like Chevy? I don't. I don't. I don't think it makes a difference. It don't really bother me. I drive a GMC, so I don't think it really matters that much. 
Uh, but electric for sure. Mm-hmm. They, Maybe they even they a hydrogen cool. truck one day. That'd would, be cool. I would be scared to like kind of let it drive for me. I w- really? I, really, I wouldn't really want to trust it that with my life. <laughs> I feel like I'd trust it because you can just let it go, especially on the interstate or a highway. Right. On a back road, I don't even know if you're allowed to let it do autopilot because I think it needs at least one line. Mm-hmm. Good painted too on each side to figure out where it is. Mm-hmm. So like if it's on a gravel road, it ain't gonna work. If it's on an old road, it's not gonna work. If it's on a road with bad lines that are kind of faded out, it won't work. We and saw someone on the way here yeah, with, she was, with the Tesla. She, she she just had her head like this, and she was just letting the car drive for her. It's pretty Didn't cool. Do anything. You can. It has like a giant like like. <laughs> Just yeah, about scream. A TV. Yeah. You can watch like t- Netflix yeah, and stuff. Yeah. I mean, Play that, games. That's what I'd do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really want one. And then people argue about like it once you are um like when do you need to charge? Like what are you gonna do for that thirty minutes? I just watch movies. Yeah, Play I mean, games. It just when, try to line it up when you're when it's lunchtime. But of of course a lot of other people will probably try to do that too. But try to I don't know, get a weird lunch, eat at two o'clock. <laughs> And then I, no one will be there, hopefully. I think it's kind of cool how, like, a newer car that I saw in a commercial. Yeah. It was, um, so it started with a key, and then mm-hmm. it went to a push button, and then it said, now it's, like, you just sit on the seat, and it's already on. That's kind of cool, I Yeah, thought. that's crazy. I mean, that was kind of weird. Technology is going fast. It's like... <laughs> it's going really yeah, fast. Yeah, it's going fast. I've kind of wanted to get solar, like, sh- solar shingles, mm-hmm. but... Well, I actually thought about doing a complete solar farm where you just, mm. like, get land and then just put solar panels all over it yeah. and then just harvest electricity. <laughs> but then they get outdated so fast. So, like, as soon as, like, two years after you built an entire solar panel fleet... That, you that d- looks... That's, like, the best in yeah. the day. Next, next year... They already have 10 other things that are way nicer. Yeah, and so you'd either have to replace them all or just keep using those which aren't nearly as good as the new ones, it'd which probably, is a good thing that they yeah. keep coming out. It'd probably take a while to like make the field too yeah. to get it all ready. Mm-hmm. I was thinking what would be good since here in Kentucky there's a lot of mountains, but no one's really figured out anything good to do with the mountains except get coal from it, which is com- pretty much completely gone. Mm-hmm. And get trees off of it and hunt. But hunt don't really count. Actually, back in the day, you could actually do fur and actually yeah. do pretty good. Fur. But that's also completely gone. So fur now prices are down a lot. Yeah, they're like they're pretty much gone because you can make something like this and no one's really going to know. Like that's mm. close enough and it's completely fake. But you can get trees off of a mountain. In lumber. Yeah, firewood. that's good. But I was thinking, what if we cut it completely off? And put solar panels all up on the mountain, and then fence it in, and put the solar panels like six feet up off the ground, and then put goats to go eat the vines underneath. Smart. But the downside to that is that the solar panels would only work half the day when the sun came up over the mountain, but then once they got it on the other side, they wouldn't work anymore. Right. So like in a flat field, your the sun comes up over here, solar panels are smart, they turn, and they literally follow the sun all the way until they're... The sun's down. Yeah. So on a hill, but, I mean, you'd only get half the time. But at the same time, hill, like, I mean, a mountain is cheaper because yeah. no one else has unless, a use for it. Unless you, um, like, just started, like, chopping layers off the top of it to try to make it lower mm. and flatter. Yeah, if you tried to tried cut to the mountain that, off. Yeah, so it would still be higher up, but then again, um, mm-hmm. you have less flat area. Mm-hmm. That'd be really good. If we could... Let's see, what, what what do you guys think you could do? This is kind of thinking about the future and hypothetical stuff, but it, what could someone do to, for a mountain to actually gain, like, for the world or something? I don't know. Like, timber, you're getting trees off of it, but that's pretty much it. You could maybe farm goats on a mountain, but... What are they really doing for it? For, yeah. For you. Yeah, I mean, they're just... You, you could keep it, meat off of it. I guess if you got a steep hill, you could just like clear cut it with mm-hmm. no trees and then try to turn it into a mountain field and then put a bunch of cows on it. But then if the cows didn't do their job completely and didn't clear up all the grass, you'd have to bush hog it. Which, on the side of a mountain. Which wouldn't work. 
because it's just too dangerous and too hard to mow. Mm -hmm. So, like, if for some reason they didn't completely mow it and keep it mowed, then you'd just be a little bit out of luck. You'd have to keep buying them, I guess. Yeah, buy a (laughs) bunch until they finally keep it mowed down. That's one thing I'm thinking about for all you guys. I'm thinking about how can I use a mountain to benefit the world somehow. And I've not figured it out yet. And apparently no one else has either. (laughs) I think we could put windmills on the top of mountains. Like uh, really would, big giant ones. Yeah, would the wind like hit giant. it too hard? Huh? Would the wind hit it too hard? That's that's good for a windmill. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> like, <That's, laughs> and you could put it way up there. You'd have to use like either titanium or steel or something real very strong like you'd that. You need something real strong. And there's like down in a valley down here or like at the bottom of the hill, windmills aren't good because the wind gets blocked by the mountains. Yeah. But I guess if you put it up on the top. The wind just still blowing over. The top. only problem yeah. would be putting it up there. Yeah, it'd be hard to put up there, and there's only limited space on Plus the top you'd of have mountain. To all, also, um, try to find a way, a path up there to haul it all, haul all the parts. That would and be hard. Mm-hmm. And then you'd also have to probably dig trenches for the lines of electricity. Mm-hmm. For that. It'd be a lot of setup for the few that you could actually put up mm-hmm. there. Hey, we're thinking. That's some deep thinking right there. Yeah. That's crazy. What's your next question? We'll keep going. Uh. Tanner said this earlier, but yeah. we can go into it again. What would you do if you didn't do YouTube? Yeah, I think I'd like to have some kind of farm. Like a cow farm, not corn. Or goats. <laughs> a chicken farm. I don't know. Chicken farm would be interesting. That would be stinky, though. Yeah, that's actually a lot of work, I think. It I is. want something that's not a lot of work and just a little bit of smart maintenance. Would you do yeah. beef? Raise them? Probably, yeah. Because... I want something that's low, low maintenance, but is an Im- more of an investment than it is a job. And also, so like, yeah. Another part for that would be: would you do organic? Try to do organic meat mm. for higher prices and less. Like you can't really help them as much if they're sick. Right. You have to try and find natural ways. Or um, would you just try to do it with antibiotics and keep them um, nice, nice and really health, healthy, really and big? Thick. Yeah. I think I'd probably go more organic because if I could just build a really nice fence, and maybe I'm undercomplicating what cow farming actually is, because it's a lot of work. Yeah. If because like you gotta have tractors and stuff. Yeah, to you give gotta you gotta have equipment. You gotta maintain the fences and all that good stuff. But if there's something that I can maintain in a little bit, but like not necessarily maintain every single day, like going out and milking a cow three times a day, that's what I'd like to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'd like to get a few cows and play with it. My uncle's got cows, yeah. but I don't really do much with them. You just go down and say hi to them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. Is that it? Uh, no, I have another question. <laughs> I have about four. Uh, four more, something like that? Three, That's four all good. More. Have you, um, Have you ever had like a really good video get lost or deleted accidentally? Let's see. How many GoPros have I lost? I think I've only lost one, and it was, a, you remember when Lucky, I put one on my mm-hmm. dog? You yeah, found that one, didn't you? Yeah, I found it like three years later. Mm-hmm. If it would have been on, that'd been great, but it wasn't recording, and it does not turn on. Mm-hmm. I think I still got the GoPro downstairs, but I've never actually taken it out of the case to see the memory card. That'd, that'd be, be cool. crazy. Yeah. That'd be cool. Then also, I don't know if you saw the ones that, things that shouldn't be sold on Wish. Oh, yeah, I see Where that. we had that fully automatic BB gun. <laughs> We actually filmed that complete video all the way through. Really great video. And then we lost the whole thing. Because the file's corrupted. Don't know why. Mm -hmm. Wait, maybe I do know why. Oh, I'll tell you. I I think I... No, I don't remember. (laughs) But anyways, those files were corrupted. So we just had to refilm it, which was kind of sad. Because we had some really funny moments. But also, I had this one camera. It was a Canon M50. Which Mm -hmm. is a really good camera Mm -hmm. to start out, by the way. But... Every time you jar it, it would just quit and f- corrupt the file. Mm. And, like, it would do that pretty regularly. And I had to get a new camera because of it. But in that, I got a, the Lumix, which is I mm-hmm. think is a little bit, maybe a little bit better. But, yeah. Now we've upgraded to that. Yeah, that's a big boy. What kind of cameras do you use? Uh, GoPros, and then I have a Canon... And I forgot the other one, but... You forgot the name of it? <laughs> yeah, I forgot the name of it. The one that we recently upgraded to is a Canon EOS R. And it's a pretty good camera. It's not the best camera that Canon comes out with. 
or has, but it's the best one that we feel comfortable buying, I guess, because it's mm-hmm. still expensive. But it's pretty good. I mean, the autofocus is really important. It focuses on my face a lot, which is really important. The colors, like on a sunny day, mm-hmm. whenever maybe your face is bright, but then your shadow is dark. This camera can make up with that, and it does really good in low light. Like, I remember you used to use no mic. Yeah. Do you I like the mic use, better? I used to. Yeah, that's a really good question. I used to use no mic, and then I started using a mic. And at first, it was kind of... So, I didn't use a mic whenever I was all alone. So, I was filming all my videos whenever I was alone. It's like... And, like, the more stuff on a camera, the harder it is to maintain. Yeah. So, like, if I was going out hunting and I just had to throw my camera in my fanny pack or my backpack or whatever, it was going to be really hard to do that with an external microphone. But now, Ethan helps me a lot. He holds the camera a lot. And so, it's nice to have the microphone because it does help. Because that's a shotgun mic. And that kind really focuses directional. Mm-hmm. It, it was aggravating at first. Whenever I was filming by myself, because it would hear me good whenever it's looking at me. Then whenever I'd turn it around and look, like, show something, it wouldn't hear me as good. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever I'm filming by myself, I do that all the time. But now that I have someone to help me hold the camera and stuff, I'm usually always in front of it. Which is great. And it works really good. I think I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. And the wind sock, which is the big fluffy looking thing, that really helps a lot in the wind. It really does. Wind and like just random gust. Just yeah. Instead of going, it's just like, yeah. <laughs> so it kind of makes up for it. Yeah. Um, but you don't have to have one at all. Mm-hmm. And for anyone just starting out, if you don't have a camera, I'd say use an iPhone because I know a lot of YouTubers, big ones too, that use nothing but iPhones. Whistle and Diesel does. Have you seen how many yeah, iPhones he, he has? has? He has like tons. Yeah, he has like ten and he just has them all just laid out on a table and he just picks up a different one every day and I'm pretty sure I'm not positive but I think there's a chance that he might edit also on his iPhone because and I mean I also know Catch Em All Fishing do you know him? I heard of him. He's from Florida. He used to film on his iPhone. I'm not I'm not sure anymore. But he used to just have a head thing on his hat. He'd strap his phone up to his head and you all that. You think it'd stuff. be easy? What I mean, to what? To, like, make good videos with an iPhone, or could you make good videos with an iPhone? I think you can make a good video with anything, because the biggest part about a video is not the quality, it's the story that you can tell. Right. So, like, if you go out and have a really good story, it don't matter if you film on what you film on. If you capture the story and edit it and tell the story right, it don't matter what you're on. That's why you can see people with big old nice cameras, like a movie, but just because they had good gear and good cameras and stuff, that don't make the movie good. It's got to be what the movie's about and all that good stuff. Just like a video. Uh, what is your favorite restaurant? Like, favorite, mm. pla- favorite place to eat at or what? Around mm. here, we don't have much. Hmm. My favorite. It was Panda Express, but I don't know how much I like it anymore. Why did you just... I just ate it a lot. Whenever I'd go... Do you, have you guys go to Panda Express much? I went there some. I'd always get the bigger plate, which is like two-something thousand calories, and I'd just eat it. That's a lot of calories. Three times a day. Yeah, I don't know if I like it anymore. <laughs> do you like like Outback? I don't really like steak houses houses that much. I think they need mm-hmm. to lay off the seasoning a little bit. <laughs> I think they need to calm down and just leave my fries alone. What about um? I'm not. I'm also not a big steak guy, mm-hmm. which I've never ate a lot of steak. Yeah. A, a good steak's good, but like a lot of steaks just are. Okay. Do you like Mexican or Chinese food? I like Mexican. I recently just ate Taco Bell for the first time, <laughs> and I'm a big fan of their one dollar beef burritos. You can get full real quick for two dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do like actual Mexican, though, too. I get a steak fajita with That's only good. rice on the side. I don't want no beans. Don't want no green lettuce. Don't bring it. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys like? I like just, um, so we have a Mexican restaurant. It's called Rancho's. And mm-hmm. um, 
ours, I always get, they have like little steak strips, like about that long, yeah. uh, um, grilled and mm-hmm. everything. And they have fried rice and then they have um, like melted cheese. It's so good. And I'll just pour it like the cheese over the steak and rice and it tastes amazing. Have you ever had um, steak nachos? Uh, yeah, they're pretty yeah. good. I used to get chicken nachos all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like shredded chicken, chips, and then just that cheese. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's good. Yeah. I like steakhouses. I don't really mind. I mean, if it's a good rest, like good restaurants mm-hmm. or pretty much popular restaurants, most of them are pretty good. Do you like fast foods? Yeah, that's pretty much all I eat. What's your favorite? F- Do you like Chick Fil A? Um, y- yeah, I forget. like it. A lot of people really like it. You think it's overhyped? I think people should. I don't know. It's not my first choice or my second. What's your or, first and second choice? Um, man, there was one I was thinking of that was pretty good. I like Ar- Fazoli's, but that's not really fast food. You like Arby's? Kinda. Arby's is okay. I like their sliders. KFC's really high up there. Yeah. KFC's KFC's really good if you have a place to eat it. If you're gonna eat it in the car, kind of hard to d- dig into yeah. a thigh on the road. Mm-hmm. But now, what about McDonald's or Burger King? I don't eat much McDonald's. Burger Same. King's good because I like their one dollar ten piece chicken nuggets. <laughs> Those are good. Yeah. Those they're not good, but they're cheap. <laughs> and they're just whenever you just you're just bored. They're yeah. a good thing to go What's eat. What's the um fast food that you don't like the most? Like Least that I think's food. overrated. Or no, the one you don't do not like. I just the don't most. like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Their food is not Let's good. See. What's one? Um. Hmm. Um, that's a good question. Fast food that I just don't like. Usually if I don't like it, I don't go, so I don't really remember <laughs> yeah. it. Do you like Subway? Oh, no. You I don't? I don't go there. No. Why is the bread so hard? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mind Subway. I'd rather have, like, a different sub place for sure, though. Mm-hmm. Also, um, what was I going to say? Um, There was some restaurant I was thinking of. You ever had Arby's Bronco Berry Sauce? No, I don't go to... We don't have Arby's near... Like oh, near us. Really. That's what I was going to say. I eat KFC a lot because it is the closest restaurant to yeah. me. Is there a lot of KFCs in Kentucky? There better be. <laughs> I mean, if not, Kentucky the first chicken. one's right down the road. Mm-hmm. Little piece. That's uh, it on questions, I'm pretty sure. Huh? Is there any questions you want to ask me? Or, or Trey, or both of us? Hmm. I feel like I kind of asked them as we went through. Right. What do you guys? Is that the last question? Or are we yeah, done? I'm, I'm out also, I got some a gift for you. Okay, let's see it. Here. Let me get how much here. Here it is, right here. Big boots. boots. A pair of boots, dry shine boots. Open them up and see what you think. I'll see what I think. Let me put this down. I've been wearing them for. I have two pairs, and I've been wearing dry them for shine? a year. They're really mm-hmm. comfy and good for. Are you cold affiliated weather. with this company in any way? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I, uh, I checked them out earlier just to like peeped in at them. And what camo pattern is that? Not sure, but I'm not mean, sure. It looks is it cool. a camo? Is it like a name pattern or just a random one? I no, it's I'm... veil. It's veil. I like that though. And these are the what? Tell me a little bit about these exact ones. They're for a lighter weather, and you can see on the side it's negative 20 degrees to 80 degrees. So That's pretty good. It's pretty, I mean, for... All around? Yeah. I like them. So they're like muck boots? Yes. The owner of muck boots came... The owner of muck boots, love muck boots, came back and asked him to make another pair. Uh-huh. So he made another pair, and it's called Dry Shot. Okay. So the... He might he improved on them than muck boots. Really? So these are better than muck boots. I think so. Mm-hmm. I have to try them out. I've never got to try them out. It does say hydro coat. I guess it's like one of their features. I guess on the side it has a sample, sample? of the material. Right beside oh, the right here. Yeah. Oh, that is cool. They're dry shots. Like they're really want. They're really supposed to be dry. Aren't they? Right. I'll try them out. I'm definitely gonna start wearing them now. Are they snake proof? No. No. Okay, well, I'll they, just try not to kick snakes. <laughs> they are, like, pretty thick, so, I mean, 
like if you like any uh, stick, um, like if you're walking through a thicket, yeah, or anything, they don't really scratch it up. That's I had muck. I had one pair of muck boots, and they immediately got. That's tore how up mine were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had big holes in them. Yeah, and so then I switched to frog togs, which are just giant rubber boots, and they weigh about thirty pounds. <laughs> are these lightweight? Pretty much lightweight. Right. They're not heavy. I do want to say one thing about. Do you like Texas Roadhouse? Uh, it's not bad. I, do. I don't like it. Why? I don't like it. I just don't like it. I'm do not you, a fan. Do you like like any other roadhouses? I mean, like, I mean, you said you didn't like roadhouses. Man, do you? I don't think I do. You don't like any? I know you said that you didn't really eat much steaks, but yeah. um, what is your favorite like type of steak? Like, um, first say like a ribeye or sirloin or that, but I don't even know enough about steaks to know. All I do know is that my buddy that I went hunting with in some of those turkey videos, Mm -hmm. he cooked one over an open fire, and it was amazing. You must know how to do it. It was crazy good. We also cooked macaroni and cheese over the fire and bacon and potatoes, which burned up, and we never got to eat. I never cook open fire. I mean, I did for my trout video, I did. Yeah. But, I mean, I normally don't. I'm not good at cooking at all. I'm getting better, though. You got the nice grills. Yeah, I, Two got, nice I grills. got the setup. I just got <laughs> yeah, you, you got the them. setup. You just got to know how to do it. I've got... Hey, um, let's see. Can you grab that fox? Okay. It, I'm going to show you all something right here. It is a red fox. It is Randy. And he. we took him to the taxidermist. And I just want to show you all in here. It's pretty simple to pick up. It ain't heavy or anything. But it is a red fox mount, and I guess, I think we'll just prop it right here onto the TV. We'll just go ahead and turn it off. We're pretty much done with that. Check this thing out, dude. Yeah, just try to maybe set it right there somehow. Yeah, you get that backside. All right. Don't want to drop, Randy. Yeah. But this is the red fox. There we go. If you haven't seen the video, you should go back and watch it. But we got it from Maggard Taxidermy. He hooked us up, man. Check that out. That thing, here, here's one thing I want to say about that fox. There's a chance that could have been the exact one that got away from me. Yeah. I ain't even kidding. Because their lifespan's quite long. I think it was like around 10 years or longer. So there's a very good chance that that could have been the same exact red fox that I lost six years ago. Payback. And there's a chance. I have no idea. But there is a really, there's a really good chance. Because, I mean, if I hadn't caught him, which I haven't caught many red foxes around here. I've caught a few, but not a lot. That could have been him. You can see, look at his ears. He's old. He's been tithered up a little bit. Yeah. If you, he's hu- he's big. Right. He said he was one of the biggest red fox he had mounted. If you got, a, if you killed an elk, would you mount that? Hmm. It'd be expensive for sure. I mean, that's yeah. a big animal. Yeah. With yeah. all the like meat and stuff, you'd be packed. I mean that. They're you'd have, big animal. You'd have to have at least two freezers to fit all of it. And Just the meat. Yeah. yeah. Let alone a head. The head would have a hard time fitting in this room. <laughs> yeah. It would. People, they make um, like detachable antlers because like, they can't fit through doors. That's that's how you know it's a big animal. <laughs> that's a good question. Would I get it for, mounted? Because that's, you know, you know an elk's going to be pretty expensive. Pricey, yeah. And but, I'm going to vi- I'm gonna have a full video over it. That I can watch any time. A European mount, though, with That's like what some thinking. cool designs on its mm-hmm. skull, that'd be nice. I could get a mm-hmm. European mount. That I don't know. I'll have to kill an elk first. Then I can yeah. figure that out. But yeah, I mean, uh, anyways, guys, you have anything else you want to talk about? No, that's it. All right. I think we're just going to end it here. What we do, what we doing next time I'm in Virginia? We don't know yet, do we? No, we know we're killing a deer. Yeah, killing 100%. a deer, trying for a bear, maybe going on a waterfowl hunt. That'd be really? Cool. Maybe. Hopefully. If Let's this, do that. I've never killed a duck. Legally. Fish and two. I mean, I, fish and two. Steve has. I said I said legally. I'm meaning that I may or may not have hit one on the lake with a boat. It just didn't count. It was road. <laughs> it was water kill. He, 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 he flew the wrong direction, and the prop tore him up. We're going to just end it right there. Okay, bye.